And the next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on the Cycling Action Plan for Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call Michael Matheson for up to 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. General Officer, I welcome this opportunity to update Parliament on the Cycle Action Plan for Scotland and the work that we are doing in partnership to realise the active travel vision. This Government remains strongly committed to delivering an active nation and the vision that Scotland's communities are shaped around people with walking and cycling the most popular choice for everyday short journeys. The Cycling Action Plan for Scotland was originally published in 2010. It set out a shared vision that by 2020, 10% 10 of all journeys in Scotland would be by bike. That vision was intended to be bold, aspirational and challenging. We have seen significant progress in some areas, such as cycle commuting in Edinburgh, which is now at 9.8%, but progress towards the overall figure, figure has been slow, and it's unlikely to be met by 2020. We recognised some, recognise some time ago that the speed of change was not good enough. That is why last year we doubled Transport Scotland's active travel budget from £39 million to £80 million. To make best use of this investment to bring about the transformative change that is needed, we are working with our partners to develop a monitoring framework. This will define a range of important outcomes, including to make sure cycling is accessible for all and to improve safety, health and the economy and the environment. This framework will be a key new measure to help drive forward active travel policy and will inform ongoing work with our partners on developing a reliable and nationally consistent way to measure progress towards 2020. We're also undertaking a broad programme of analytical work and engagement with our delivery partners to understand better where we and others are succeeding in making progress and to apply those lessons elsewhere. With the doubling of the budget, we now have levels of investment in active travel which match our ambitions. Including match funding from local authorities, Scotland's investment in walking and cycling in 2018-19 was £135 million, which is over £25 per capita. Far more uh, than the rest of the UK and similar to our northern European neighbours such as the Netherlands and Denmark. As well, as well as our £80 million active travel funding, we have allocated a further £5 million for sustainable travel behaviour change projects. We offer £950,000 worth of loan funding for electric bikes, and we have secured a further £7.6 million from the European Regional Development Fund for low carbon and active travel hubs. We have used these increased budgets to step up support for local authorities to build safe, segregated walking and cycling infrastructure and to expand and improve our behaviour change programme. This integrated approach is crucial. Evidence shows that combining training and advocacy with high quality infrastructure and place, places designed for people is the best way to enable more people to walk and cycle for everyday journeys. We are seeing uh, some sign of progress, as well as the increase in cycling in Edinburgh. We've seen similar increases in Glasgow, Murray and in Highland. And 10% of people who live in small, remote towns cycle at least once a week as a means of transport. Since 2011, over a quarter of a million school children have participated in Cycling Scotland's Bikeability Scotland Cycle Training. This percent, the percentage of schools participating has risen from 29% to 42%. And nearly 500 Scottish schools have received cycling friendly status through Cycling Scotland's Cycle Friendly Scheme. This is before the effects of our record capital investment are truly being felt. It will take time to build the quality, transformational places and infrastructure we need. It's important we take time to work with communities to ensure the projects are right, but we will look at ways to streamline the process. Last year, we invested 
some £36 million in Sustrans Community Links programme and a further £9 million to commence design of six larger, ambitious, high-quality segregated cycling infrastructure projects. I look forward to seeing the first of these, the South City Way in Glasgow, being delivered in 2019. This year, I am delighted to announce that we will be allocating a record £51 million from our active travel budget for 2019 to our new combined Places for Everyone infrastructure programme, administered on our behalf by Sustrans. As part of this programme, 10 ambitious projects are currently being considered for large-scale multi-year funding. So far, Sustrans has received funding bids from 30 local authorities for segregated paths, improvements to the public realm and projects that make our towns and cities safer and friendlier places to live, work and spend time. We hope to announce those projects in the next few months. It is important to recognise, however, that investment in active travel facilities and behaviour change projects won't on its own bring about the step change we want to see. In all of this government's work on bus services and public transport more generally, on health and wellbeing, on planning, the environment and climate change, we need to consider how we can support active travel. This broader, more strategic approach will be supported by the National Transport Strategy and the second Strategic Transport Policy Review. Both will set out a compelling vision for the kind of transport system we want for Scotland over the next 20 years and the type and scale of intervention that we, that will, deliver, uh, that we'll, we will deliver uh, to achieve this. The draft National Transport Strategy, which will, we will consult on this summer, sets four priority areas. Tackling climate, act, taking climate action, improving our health and well-being, promoting equality and helping our economy prosper. These priorities recognise the importance of enabling people to make active travel choices to improve their health and well-being. The Transport Bill will be an enabler of change. The Bill aims to improve journeys for people across the country by supporting the development of a cleaner, smarter and more accessible network. By seeking to improve bus services and introducing low emission zones, it promotes active and sustainable travel for cyclists. The prohibition on double parking will assist in keeping roadways clear. In addition, we have agreed to, uh, to support a Scottish Green Amendment to enable local authorities to introduce workplace parking levy schemes. This is a discretionary power. It has the potential to encourage modal shift towards public transport and active travel including by supporting improvements to transport infrastructure and services in local areas to provide alternative, alternatives to car use. Better integration between modes is important. Bus has a key role to play in joining up active journeys and in spreading the benefits of active travel more widely. If integrated active travel infrastructure and bus routes offer people faster, easier, healthier, a more sustainable means of getting to their destination, they are much more likely to use them. That's why I will be keen to see how the new internal bike racks introduced by border buses earlier this year will be taken up. On rail, ScotRail has delivered 1,500 additional cycle spaces at stations and provided bike and go cycle hire facilities at 12 stations across Scotland. Overall, 97% of stations have cycle parking with over 5,000 customer cycle spaces in total. On climate change, this government reacted to the declaration of a global climate emergency with amendments to our climate change bill to set a net zero target for 2045 and increase the target for 2030 to 70%. Scotland already has an ambitious agenda for decarbonising transport, but transport is Scotland's biggest emitting sector, and it's clear that further action will be required to meet the new target. Signing officer, 
The Scottish Government is committed to making Scotland an active nation and we are now matching that ambition with record levels of funding. There are positive signs of progress but less than we would like and much more for us to do. I am confident that our ambitious programme of active travel investment will play a key part in delivering the greener, safer, happier and healthier Scotland that we all want to see. <clears throat> the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in the statement for around 20 minutes. And would those who wish to ask a question press the request to speak buttons, please. And I have a lot of people who wish to ask questions, so we have to be concise with questions and answers to get through them. Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'll start by uh, being positive uh, by thanking the Cabinet Secretary for his statement. But the reality is that in this 1,230 word statement, there's very little to be cheerful about, because what we learned from it quite simply is the following. On the transport bill, the SNP confirmed its support for the much critiqued and hated car park tax. On active travel, it announced an 80 million pound budget that you already knew about, but has been miraculously re-announced today. And the big announcement is continued funding for a policy that we already knew about, delivered by an agency that we already know, and funded by a budget already announced. Perhaps the real news today, presiding officer, Buried away in the statement is the admission by the Cabinet Secretary that the government is going to spectacularly fail its flagship cycling action plan target of 10% of all journeys to be made by bike. So let's give the Minister a chance to give some substance to his statement. Can I ask, what percentage of journeys does he expect to be made by bike by the original 2020 target? Secondly, when he now expects this 10% target to actually be met and thirdly, if, after 10 years, his current cycling action plan has failed, will he publish a new one? And if so, when? Michael Matz. Epstein officers, it stands at the moment, there is, um, overall, it's around 4% of journeys are made by uh, cycling in the way which was set out within the plan. Uh, that actually in itself is actually at a at record level, but clearly very much off the target that was set uh, previously at the time when the action plan was published back in 2010, illustrating the need for us to take further action on this matter, which is why uh, I'm putting in place a, a framework in order for us to monitor implementation, taking it forward, but also to make sure there's a much greater focus on the outcomes that are being achieved uh, as part of the plan. In addition to that, uh, we're also undertaking a review um, of the existing a cycle action plan which is being conducted by uh, Cycling Scotland at the present time uh, which will inform what further actions we need to take forward uh, as a part of that review. Uh, the member made reference to the uh, suggestion that it's uh, an announcement, a re-announcement of the uh, 80 million pounds. Uh, what is important to recognise here, President Officer, is that this is a record level of funding which has been invested into uh, uh, active travel within uh, Scotland and given that it's matched funds by local authorities it invests a significant amount of investment on an ongoing basis uh, into active travel the highest level for any part of uh, the UK uh, what we need to do is to make sure that we start to see the benefits that come from that capital investment we're making in order to encourage people to make greater use of active travel options when they are traveling Colin Smith Thank you, President Officer. I, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Almost 10 years ago, the Government set a target to increase the share of everyday journeys made on bike to 10% by 2020. Since then, the proportion of all journeys taken by bike has increased by just 0.7% to a woeful 1.5%. It's difficult to imagine the target set by the Government being half the level that it expected by 2020. And this failure needs to act as a wake-up call to the Government. So I welcome the announcement made today about the places for everyone infrastructure programme. Significant projects such as these being considered for funding will be essential to increase in active travel rates in Scotland. But given the climate emergency we face and the slow progress in raising the number of journeys by bike, does the Cabinet Secretary not accept that all viable projects within the programme should be funded, not just a select few? Michael Matheson. General Officer, it's important that uh, we recognise the need to make sure we take concerted action to tackle the climate emergency, including the need to make sure that local authorities have the powers to take forward measures that can assist them in being able to tackle issues relating to uh, climate change. And I hope that the member will reflect on the, what I think was a knee-jerk response that the Labour Party took to workplace parking levy 
and giving local authorities the powers to be able to have that option, given that it was something that I understand was actually in the Labour Local Government Manifesto for the Glasgow area at the last elections, recognising it can be an important measure that can assist in tackling issues relating to climate change, air quality and modal shift. No doubt we'll see the colour of Labour's money tomorrow when the amendments are considered in the Transport Bill to see how committed they are to the climate emergency or not. What I can assure the member is that we have made that record investment into, uh, into, uh, tra into active travel infrastructure. Uh, we've maintained that this year. Uh, the proportion of that which is going to uh, capital investment projects has increased as well in order to support the type of transformational change that we need to see in infrastructure, which I believe is a key part of what's necessary in order to address the low numbers of individuals who take up active travel options. And that's something that we will continue to do. And no doubt for those local authorities that want to make additional investment, the option of using workplace parking levies and invest money that comes from that, investing in their local areas gives them the possibility to be able to do that in their area. We move to the open questions. I don't want to be cutting people off mid uh, Mr. Smith, could you please be quiet? I don't want... I said, please, would you please be quiet? I don't want to be cutting people off midstream, uh, so please be concise in questions and answers. The open questions are Alison Johnson, followed by Gillian Martin. Um, thank you. There's, there's more spin here than you'll see in a peloton. You've a vision for 10% of journeys to be by bike by next year. You've declared a climate emergency and yet you've announced nothing new between more monitoring and analysis, and you've even failed to acknowledge in this statement that with just six months to go, the figure sits at 2%, even lower than the 3% of the huge transport budget that you invest in this area. Is it not high time, Cabinet Secretary, that this vision became an actual target? And can you tell the Chamber, as Jamie Green asked, just when you intend to meet it? Can I remind members who should always speak through the chair, Michael Matheson. Uh, Sign officer, that's why we've asked uh, uh, Cycling Scotland to undertake a review of the action plan to look at what further measures need to be taken forward in order to address these uh, issues. And that's why we're committed to continuing with the record investment into active travel provisions with the £80 million which we're investing in this. I often hear uh, the members say that we should uh, use a, a larger portion of or at least 10% of our, our, our roads budget in Scotland for this purpose. Actually, the roads budget in Transport Scotland uh, for our trunk and motorway network is around £800-odd million. Pounds. This is uh, approximately 10% of it. It's actually over 10% of that particular uh, budget. But no doubt there will be those who will call for greater investment to be made into this area. Uh, clearly, we have sought as a priority, which is why we have doubled the budget. It is, of course, extremely disappointing that we have not achieved the target over that 10-year, uh, what is almost 10-year uh, period, which is why it's important that we have a very clear focus on making sure that we're taking the right measures that will deliver the type of change that we want to see and to do that. And that's exactly what the framework and the review is about doing to make sure we get that in place. So when the member in a sedentary position, Mr Harvey, says when, we're doing that right now, now in order to get that matter addressed. Gillian Martin, followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you, President Officer. A safe route to school is a right for children. Would the, minister, uh, would the Cabinet Secretary be able to give any details on how we can ensure that a child has the right to a safe cycle route to school? Michael Matheson. Yeah, President Officer, as it stands through the uh, £51 million places for everyone programme, we are encouraging all local authorities to submit proposal projects for delivering safer routes to schools uh, for children. In 2018-19, uh, we invested some £2.5 million in infrastructure in and around schools and over £2 million on behaviour change and cycle training programmes for children. Uh, this year, uh, such strands have received proposals from 25 local authorities for safer routes to schools and other infrastructure projects around schools, which are presently being evaluated. Mike Rumbles, followed by Emma Harper. Presiding officer, two years ago, this parliament passed a motion saying that every school child should have the opportunity to benefit from cycle training. Then, only 62% of schools offered some form of cycle training, 62%. Now that figure has fallen when it should have increased. So how, exactly how, will the Transport Secretary ensure that we do actually make cycle training available to all our school children as we all unanimously agreed in this chamber two years ago. Michael Matheson. 
Uh, Officer, as I mentioned, we have actually had an increase in the number of local authorities and schools which are participating in the bikeability scheme and also in the cycle uh, friendly, friendly programme. It is a, it is a programme which local authorities need to buy into. Uh, so we will continue to work with local authorities to encourage them uh, to do so because it is a scheme that can help to support them and their pupils in making sure that they have an understanding of the uh, risks of uh, cycling on the road, uh, uh, also the benefits that come from it, and also uh, to help to support them in thinking about the type of options that they can use cycling for as well. So there's a scheme which is available for local authorities to buy into, uh, and we continue to promote that with local authorities to ask them to do so. Uh, but it is ultimately down to local authorities and schools to decide on whether they choose to actually make use of that or not. But it's available, and the funding which is there for it has continued and continues to be made available for them to participate in the scheme. Emma Harper, followed by Liam Kerr. I welcome the commitment for additional funding. Will the Cabinet Secretary consider infrastructure spending to improve the cycling network along the coast of South West Scotland so that it can be better connected, more accessible and attractive to people in Scotland as well as folks looking to holiday and visit South Scotland? Michael Matheson. Well, President Officer, uh, as I just mentioned, the uh, uh, £51 million Places for Everyone programme is a programme which is operated on our behalf by Sustrans, which local authorities can bid into for cycle infrastructure. Uh, and I would encourage those uh, uh, local authorities in the southwest of Scotland uh, to consider putting forward proposals for that fund. Liam Kerr, followed by Tom Arthur. Thank you, President Officer. Last week I made the point, which I think the Cabinet Secretary agreed with, that a 20 mile an hour limit would be ignored and won't get more people cycling. What will, as I think Gillian Martin was saying, is a proper, safe, segregated cycle lane. Now, the Cabinet Secretary talked about money to Sustrans, but this is in a context of uh, massively constrained local authority funding. So what role will the Scottish Government play in ensuring proper cycling infrastructure is brought in? And how much money is the Government directly committing yeah. to that? Michael Matheson. Uh, £51 million, which is much funded by local authorities. So, for example, the investment we saw in the course of the last year, which is the vast majority of the uh, funding within the £80 million uh, active travel budget, is capital investment. Uh, and most of it is match funded by local authorities. So the investment we've saw in the course of this year has resulted in the region of about £135 million being invested between the government and local authorities. Uh, for those who would say that we should, the government should just pay for all of this, I disagree with them. And the reason I disagree with them is because local authorities have got a key role to play in making sure that they also take ownership for the delivery of the type of infrastructure that's necessary. For the very reasons that I do agree the member, with the member on is that segregated, separate, um, infrastructure for cycling and walking I think is one of the critical elements in helping to support people to make that modal shift which is why we've increased our funding for that type of provision within the budget this year in order to support local authorities and why we've also set them the target of making sure to match fund that so we see even greater investment going into providing that type of cycling and walking infrastructure. Tom Arthur followed by Claudia Beamey. Nielsen Development Trust in my constituency of Renfrewshire South delivers a range of services to promote cycling, both in Nielsen and across East Renfrewshire, including repairs and maintenance, reconditioning donated bikes and providing training. Can the Cabinet Secretary say how work to deliver the ambitions of the Cycling Action Plan will support local community-led groups, such as the Nielsen Development Trust, to promote cycling in their areas, and how in turn such groups will contribute to reaching our national targets for increased cycling? Michael Matheson. Uh, officer, the existing uh, cycle action plan underpins the grant funding mechanism we have in place for a range of different cycling uh, uh, funds which are available. Uh, we've invested some £7.28 million pounds in 2018-19 uh, on a range of uh, behaviour changing activities to encourage more people to walk and cycle safely and to do so confidently. Uh, this includes within that fund uh, some £300,000 in grant funding uh, which is issued through the Cycling Friendly Communities Fund which can support uh, small local initiatives of the very nature that's been highlighted uh, by Tom Arthur. And I would encourage the Nielsen Development Trust to consider making application to that fund for uh, support for the work that they undertake, the valuable work that they undertake within his constituency. Claudia Beamish, followed by Alistair Allen. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary failed utterly to even refer to the question asked by my colleague Colin Smith, so let me give him another chance. Given the woeful progress in raising the number of journeys by bike and the need, by his own recognition, of more segregated on 
on road cycle lanes. Does the Cabinet Secretary not accept that all the viable projects within the Places for Everyone infrastructure programme should be funded? Michael Matheson. Uh, officer, I'm conscious of the amounts of calls that are made on government funding for a whole range of initiatives that it would be great if we could provide funding to them all, but we have a limited budget and we can only make investments in areas where we can get the best, most benefit from. That's the same in the transport portfolio as it is in health, justice, education. So I recognise that the Labour Party work in the world of there's a money tree at the bottom of the garden which can fund everything and anything that anybody uh, requests. But the reality is that we do have a limited budget and that's why we have made record investment into cycling infrastructure. No doubt the member will welcome that and we will do as much as we can to support these various initiatives right across local authorities in Scotland to get the infrastructure right and I'll leave Labour to deal with the money tree at the bottom of their garden and how they fund all of these things. Alistair Allen, followed by, by Graham Sims. Uh, Mr Smith, could you please stop being so rude to your colleagues when they're being called for questioning by shouting from your seat? Alistair Allen, followed by Graham Simpson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The cycle route, the Hebridean Way, has very successfully drawn more and more cyclists to the Western Isles since it was opened by record-breaking long-distance cyclist Mark Bowman three years ago. What action is the Scottish Government uh, taking to make provision for this growth, both in the islands and other rural areas of Scotland, in terms of infrastructure? Michael Matheson. Uh, Sign officer, I'm very well aware of the uh, increasing uh, number of people who are making use of the Hebridean Way and the number of people who have been attracted to that, not just from within Scotland or the UK, but from out with the UK in travelling to make use of that particular route, which is proving to be extremely popular. Uh, part of the funding which we're providing is part of the active travel uh, programme, uh, the £51 million Places for Everyone programme, is a programme which allows local authorities to submit proposals uh, for delivering paths in rural areas for walking and cycling of the very nature that, uh, that Alistair Allen made reference to. Uh, for example, in the Highlands, we're continuing to develop the Caledonian uh, Way, which is seeing investment being made in order to help to support the uh, route link between North Connell and Oban. And we want to see an expansion of these types of strategic tourist routes that we know that will encourage people to travel to Scotland uh, in order to make use of them. So the uh, Places for Everyone programme is the initiative which is in place which local authorities can submit proposals to in order to get funding support for walking and cycling initiatives. Graeme Simpson. Thank you. Cycling Scotland published its own progress report on the Cycle Action Plan in 2016. Um, which stated the 10% target would not be met even then. They said there should be a long-term increase in sustained funding with year-on-year -year increases over time towards a 10% allocation of national and council transport budgets. Is that something the Cabinet Secretary agrees with? Michael Matheson. Uh, Signed officer, on the basis that last year we doubled the active travel budget and this year we have sustained that in order to see greater capital investment. I do recognise that uh, greater funding be made available for providing the type of infrastructure to support people making the modal shift from, uh, from uh, cycling or, or from to cycling or walking. Alongside that, continued investment in other options such as uh, bus, where we saw further investment by the Scottish Government, and also by rail in order to encourage people to make modal shift uh, from using their cars will all contribute uh, to this particular agenda and in these areas where these are areas where we continue to make significant investment uh, uh, from an active travel point of view but also in the wider transport infrastructure in Scotland as a whole. Jenny Mara. A number of school children have just joined us in the gallery. I would be surprised if even one or two of them maybe cycled to school cabinet secretary but in terms of safety of cycling to school, does the Cabinet Secretary agree that 20 miles per hour might make it more, uh, better for children to be safe if they're cycling to school? Michael Matheson. Which is why, as a government, we support 20 million hour zones being introduced in the right place for local authorities to do that, particularly around, uh, around, uh, around schools, for example. Uh, rather than taking a one-size-fits-all approach, making sure local authorities do it in the right areas, which we know a number of local authorities do. And I'm sure the member would want to recognise that and to make sure that councils have got the pillars and the ability to do that and to support them in doing that. So I'm afraid the member is misguided in thinking that we don't support 20 million hour zones. We do. We just don't believe that the one-size-fits-all approach that was in Mr Ruskell's bill is the right way of going about doing that. 
And the last question, quickly, please, Bruce Crawford. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sir. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm he's aware of the fantastic work being done by Forth Environment Link and Stirling Cycle Hub to promote the encouraged cycling in the Stirling area to make Stirling the most cycle-friendly city in the country? And the city-wide bike-sharing scheme is an important part of that. But what more can the Scottish Government and local government do to help develop more protected cycle lanes? In Stirling, 83% of residents support building new such lanes despite the impact on traffic. Quickly, please, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I'm uh, very much aware of the uh, fourth Environment Link uh, work in Stirling and the uh, active travel hub which they have, which I believe may be as good as the active travel hub that they have in my own constituency, just along from my constituency office in uh, Falkirk. I'm also aware that they are taking forward work on the Community Links programme, uh, also the Community Links Plus project, which is aimed at delivering uh, safer roads uh, and segregated cycle paths and improve, improving the local uh, public realm for ped pedestrians and other users and I've got no doubt that they will uh, continue to pursue that. Additionally, Fourth Environment Link is developing the first regional electric bike scheme in Scotland which will support modal shift and the sustainable travel options in the area and I would certainly want to continue to encourage Fourth Environment Link on this very important work which I've seen firsthand in my own constituency as it's taken place within Mr Crawford's constituency. That concludes questions on the Ministerial Statement on the Cycling Action Plan for Scotland. There were other members who would like to have asked questions that I wasn't able to take. And I would ask all members to consider that when they're giving questions or giving answers, that they should be a bit more concise. And we will shortly move on to the next item of business.